Hey everyone, Rushlock here with Kerbal Space Program. We're going to go into our second training scenario here. So we're going to training and basic flight. Let's load this one up. Welcome to the Kerbal Space Sensor Launch Facility. I'm Gene Kerman and I will teach you the basics of piloting a spacecraft. Trust you've already checked the basic instruction tutorial. If not, I recommend you do so before going through this one. Today we'll run, uh, do a run through of all the important controls for your spacecraft. Our little hopper from your basic instruction lesson with Werner may not have all of them, but we'll do a full run through once and see how it flies. If you're ready to go, press next. Flying a spacecraft is all about being in control of a generally very chaotic situation. As a pilot, your main flight controls will be will affect the pitch, the yaw, and the roll of the ship. Let's look at those first. All the other controls will be locked until they're needed or this tutorial is closed. Pitch, yaw, and roll are the three directions uh, you will rotate your craft. To help you visualize these, we've taken a holiday snap of the hopper below. Next up, we'll see how we rotate in these directions. You control your ship's rotation using the, the, uh, the following controls. S and W will pitch up and down. A and D will yaw left and right. In Q and E, or A and D is yaw left and right. Q and E will roll uh, left and right. So let's see where these are on the keyboard. So these are pitch. These are yaw. And these are rolling. Okay. By controlling pitch, yaw, and roll together, you can keep the ship in a controlled flight. Try it now and notice the indicator on the lower left side move as you pro uh, provide control input. Let's try out the buttons then. So this one would be rolling left and right. I'm trying to see if it's actually turning on the ground. I think it is. And then this will be the yaw. Nothing actually changes with that because we're on the ground, but you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. And the roll, we did roll before, this is pitch. Okay. Throttle plus pitch, yaw and roll are the main controls you'll need to master a successful uh, crash-free flight. We'll skip over the throttle control for now as this vessel has no need for it. Don't worry, I'll explain it another time when it's, uh, it's of use. Remember that all of these controls have a limited amount of effectiveness, so bigger, heavier ships will probably respond much more sluggishly, sluggishly to the controls than a little small one. It's also good to keep in mind that as stages are separated from the ship, it will become lighter, and this will usually mean easier to control. Next, let's look at the rest of the flight controls. In flight, all the, rem all the planning you put in the staging sequence of your ship comes into play. From launch to the final deployment of the descent parachutes, you can control the activation of the, of the several of several of these ships' parts by activating stages. Space will launch slash activate stage. Notice the stage indicator in the lower left-hand corner. It shows the currently active stage. Since we haven't launched yet, it's showing the first stage is active. I have your staging controls locked for now, so the stage indicator is glowing purple. Okay. Stage 01, got it. One more thing on staging. If the staging setup is causing strife or you change your mind about something, you can edit the stage sequence on the fly. Pun intended, no need to go back to the assembly facility. Oh, I mean, we can change it here if we needed to. I got you. An important part of flying is knowing how your ship is oriented and where it is going. That's why a good pilot is always aware of the ship's altitude or attitude where it's pointing, and velocity vector, where it's going. These important, these aren't always the same direction, and as your skills improve, you should pick up on these. Um, the big round instrument on the lower center of the screen is called the nav ball. This device sums up most of the critical information needed for proper death-free flight. Here you see the ship's nose in relation to the horizon. When you're not pointing straight up, it's easily visible as a line between the blue sky and the brown ground, as well as heading, compass bearing, and speed. You also get several icons that indicate things like your current velocity vector, but we'll have a closer look at those later. In the top center of the screen, you have your altimeter, vertical speed indicator, 
and atmosphere gauges. The altimeter will show the distance to the planet's surface at sea level. This means the actual surface may be much closer, so watch out for the ground when landing. Your vertical speed indicator shows how quickly your altitude is changing. When launching, it's considered best to keep the gauge pointed up. The atmosphere gauge indicates how deep the ship is in the planet's atmosphere. This helps you know if the ship is high enough for orbiting without losing speed to air resistance, or judge how effective wings and control surfaces will be. One last thing before we give this rocket the green light. In the staging stack, you can see the indicator for your parachute. This indicator shows that the parachute will be activated by staging. You already know that, but the background will also change color to indicate when it is safe to stage the parachute. And the foreground, the parachute's bit of the icon itself, will change color depending on the parachute state. Note, however, that by default, the parachutes will not deploy when unsafe, even if you stage them. The left three shows safety, uh, safe, risky, and unsafe to deploy. The chute is unstaged, white, in the left three. The right three show state after stage, armed, deployed, and cut, and shredded. When you are familiar with the chute icon colors, we can move on. Okay, enough talk. I'll unlock the flight controls and you'll be able to clear for launch. At any time, you may press escape to pause the game. In the pause menu, you can restart the flight or end this tutorial. Choose end scenario and return to the main menu. For now, get yourself prepared to hit that space Hit space when ready to launch. Don't forget, your, our hopper has only a solid rocket motor, so there is no throttle control. Uh, that's why we didn't review the throttle uh, here. Make sure to fly in a nice high arc and enjoy the flight. All right, so we hit space and we're good to go, I guess. Off we go. We can mess around with our spin here. Pitch will change our direction. We can spin our camera around with this. We want to change that this way. Get a little bit of an arc going. We're going to lose power here soon. We achieved 9,000 meters. 10,000 meters. Imagine we're going to peak here at some moment. See our speed starting to dip off. Oh, 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 that's a problem. Spin all over the place. Your solid motor has burned out. You're passing apotheosis. Speed is low enough that it's safe to, oh, do so now before you speed up again. That's going to be a problem. So I don't see an actual parachute. This seems fine. I thought the nose would be pointing upward. So the chute is out. It's in yellow condition. I wonder if we get details for it. Nope. Let's look at the camera. Seems to me we're coming in pretty hot. The chute's slowing us down, but I think we wanted to go into the water. I don't think we're going to get over there in time. I think we're going to hit the ground pretty hard. If I paid more attention earlier, I think we could have steered this toward the water overall. Oh, there we go. There's that's decelerating. Nice. So we're gonna come down right down on the beach. I'm guessing I could steer it if I wanted to. To a very minor degree. I don't see any difference on that. I don't think we'll get below six meters a second. The uh, shoot condition looks good. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Oh, we're rolling. I think once the end is pointing towards the beach, we'll be fine. Well done. You survived your first quick flight. When, you la when you're landed or splashed on Kerbin and not in training, you can point the mouse just above the alt altimeter and click the recover button. <coughs> Excuse me. I think where that is. I'm guessing a button will appear here or something. Um, on the panel that slides down to ask to be picked up. I've also, uh, I've also unlocked the crew hatch. So if you feel like you're going out for a walk or swim, you can click the, uh, the EVA a button that will pop up when you are when you mouse over the portrait of the Kerbal you want uh, to take for a walk. You, just, you can do this just for fun or to collect a surface sample. This concludes today's lesson. Exit, to exit training, you press escape to access the pause menu and end scenario. I hope to see you again to learn more about suborbital flight, perhaps, and bye. So as we hit the water. Oh, that seemed to stop us. In the scenario, we'll see you all in the next video.